Hello everybody, I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And we're here for Shonen Archive. What Shonen Archive? There's no time. <laughs> <laughs> there is literally no I'm time. Glad you asked. Watch I'm a different glad. episode. <laughs> Watch a different episode. It's Giga. It's the Giga episode of Shonen Archive where we're going to be covering the entire arc of the Yoshiwara in Flames arc for Gintama, which is episodes 139, episodes 140, episode 141, episode 142, episode 143, episode 144, 145, and 146. I didn't even have enough time to say episodes at the end of those other episodes. <laughs> And we need to get started on this right away. So, Zen, are you ready, sir? I am ready. Then let's get into it. I will be doing the plot summary for this. So hold in, to, hold on to your butts, everybody. So we're going to start with episode 139, which is titled, Don't Put Your Wallet in Your Back Pocket. Um, the episode starts with uh, some lady... And she is kind of talking about a metaphorical sun. There's a lot of talk about like metaphors here at the beginning. This all comes back later on at the <laughs> later in the arc. But after the opening, we see that uh, a street urchin uh, runs up to Kentucky and he tries to pickpocket him. And he takes his wallet and he inspects it and sees that he has absolutely no money to him at all. And then we have he starts talking shit about how Kentucky has no money. He has nothing. And then Gintoki walks into frame and you've seen that Gintoki has pickpocketed the kid back. And he starts, um, he catches him and he basically says like, oh man, I just found some money. I can't wait to buy a parfait. And then the kid says, hey, that's my wallet. And Gintoki basically catches him in a lie right there. So after taking, after forcing the kid to buy him a parfait, <laughs> so he actually does end up getting a parfait with the kid's money. He then says that you owe me a whole bunch of money because of all the money that was in my wallet, um, even though there was literally no money in there, but it's just his way of kind of having the kid uh, owe him some kind of debt. He goes to, he takes him to Otose's uh, snack bar, where the kid eventually, and no, I think at some point, is it before that? Does he explain... No, he explains to Kentucky why he needs the money. And basically what he's been using the money for is that he wants to buy a time with a prostitute, which is Hinawa, which is located in the located in the name of what this arc is, which is Yo Yoshiwara. Yoshiwara, yeah. Yep, Yoshiwara. So he goes there and he basically gives these this guy money and he's basically saving up money so he knows that he, She's very particular about who she's going to see. Not even high officials can really actually see and talk to her at all. So he's building up money so that he can maybe even have just like a drink with her of some kind. At least that's why he's been taking the money and doing that. And when he's in the snack bar, he explains why he does it. They have originally assumed that it's because this kid just wants to buy a prostitute. And they make fun of him saying, haha, kid. Kid just want this <laughs> dumb kid looking for sex. No, it's not actually that. The reason is, is that he believes her to be his mom because the man that he was living with, the old man that he was living with on his deathbed, he said, your mom is still alive. And that, and he says that was his mom. Uh, one moment real quick. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. We're back. Anyway, the kid says that he believe that that is my mom. And that's the reason why he's saving up is that he wants to check out his mom and talk to her it seems like every time he goes to where she's actively ignoring him um because he says in the past in the once he learned about the truth he always went over there and he tried to get her attention but she never looked at him and never did anything so the plan is save up buddy buy a time with her and good to go and that's why he's been stealing from people tose tells him no mom would want to see their kid if they pickpocketed a bunch of money to go see them so she says, like, I can't pay you a lot, but you can work for me. And then uh, Atose and her crew basically clean up the kid to make him look <laughs> like a respectable street urchin. As opposed to just the scraggy <laughs> street urchin that he was. And he learns to kind of, like, basically is no longer a thief and starts living an honest life from that point on. And... Um, Atose also talks about the specific underground city because I think Kintoki starts asking questions about it and he says that it's ruled by a guy called Night King Hassan. Not Hassan. Hassan? Is it Hassan? Yeah, it's like, it's like H-O-S-O-N. 
Yeah. I, I'm, 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 Hassan, I'm, I might get it a little bit mixed up because there's also a character in Fago called King Hassan. And when I see the Hose, <laughs> it's going to make me say it's that. So forgive me in my brain. I'm trying my best here when it comes to names. I'm not the greatest when it comes to names. But anyway, he says that that's the person who's kind of ruling him. Uh, back at the underground city, we see the two bouncers. The one that has been taking the kid's money talks about, like, um, talks about Sada's money, and he admits that basically he. <laughs> The, the guy he's talking with was like, he should have afford enough to just, like, get tea with her. And then it's revealed that he's actually been taking the money and using it to buy alcohol this entire time. Um, Gintoki overhears them and then in a very cool way immediately fucking knocks both of them off of their ass after they do their whole evil spiel of, like, we're taking money from this kid. <laughs> he knocks them both out and the... Uh, the lady who he was at the snack shop with says, like, hey. He also steals their money, which is a nice, uh, <laughs> the true hero of everything. He makes sure to get money back from him. He never returns the money to, <laughs> to Sada, so I don't think, uh, I don't think he gave it back. I think he just robbed them. But anyway, the, the, the snack bar lady says, like, uh, cause he asks, like, how much do I have to pay for the, the snacks? And she says, like, it's okay. You basically made it better. Uh, you made me happy with what you did right there, so it's fine. Uh, and then it's revealed that she's also a not a spy. What do they call them here? The uh, they're like called a very specific thing, but they're basically like the army of the of women who guard the 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 place. And she he picks a fight with her, and he's able to beat her up. And this is also where Seda also is in the place in general while shit's popping off. And that's when Kagura and Shinpachi are there. They kind of explain to him what's been going on. Um, and they get attacked by... He's very distraught about what they're doing. What, learning that basically he's been tricked this entire time and he's nowhere close to it. But basically Shinpachi says, like, we're here to make sure that to let you actually see her. But before they can do anything else, they're attacked by a ninja woman who had an introduction later, earlier on that I forgot to mention, but then we're talking about how there was, uh, the women have power on the underground, and she has her introduction there where she just, like, smokes three samurai dudes, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it ends with uh, her attacking them, and that's it. And her name is Suko... This is another one I'm going to have. Sukoyo? Sukoyo? Is that how they say her name? Uh, yeah, Sequoia. Sequoia, okay. Again, when I see how the the names are spelled, and then I have to go, like, that's how they... Sequoia, okay, yeah. But yeah, Sequoia shows up, and that's where the episode ends. And that is episode 139. What do you think, Zen? Uh, I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really good. Uh, I liked the bit in the beginning where um, everyone else is making fun of him for being a virgin, and then Shinpachi's like, wait, don't do that, and they all start making fun of Shinpachi for being a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Um, and I thought it was a, a compelling little story. like Because, you know, there's always like, oh, I'm saving up money for my sick mom or whatever. Um, and it's, you know, it's never that. Like, yeah. Not that that's not an okay backstory, but it's not that exciting. But uh, the, the idea of like, I'm going to save up a bunch of money so that I can buy a prostitute's time because that's my mom and I want to see my mom uh, was, was very unique and, and interesting and fun. And I like Gintoki's little lecture, too, where uh, he's, like, shitting on the kid. And the kid's like, I'm just a kid. And he's like, the fact that you know you're a kid means I should treat you like an adult. <laughs> yeah, when he's, in the, when he's in the stack bar just yelling at him, saying, like, you're going to repay the entire thing. I needed that for my rent. <laughs> like, all the money you stole from me. It's really good. Uh, yeah, I also like that a whole bunch. I like, th- I thought they did a very good job setting up this kid from the beginning with him pit bo- pit getting, it's funny because the way that they do a little bit of sympathy, you start to feel a little bit bad with him when Kentucky starts to messing with him to such a large degree because <laughs> he really is. Yeah, it just starts fucking with him like really bad, <laughs> really badly. But the kid has a very interesting motives, like you said right there, and I liked how he was, like you said, with his interaction with Shimpachi, and then Shimpachi starts freaking out and saying, like, don't you know that 30-year-old virgins actually get 
turn into like the stronger form than Tama's in the background was like I'm I'm going to be adding that to my database to make for future reference and Atose immediately like, like hits her in the back of the head it's like don't don't record useless information yeah <laughs> she starts reading it back <laughs> the robot yeah that was really good um there's also a bit where they're when they're cleaning them up which was really funny where they they get um uh, Tama to clean him up, and she's just like cleaning him everywhere, <laughs> and he makes like this really weird noise in the bathroom. She's like, "I've cleaned him everywhere except for a very specific t- spot between the genitals." And here's he's like, "I need you to shut up. I need you to stop <laughs> talking about what you've done to this child." <laughs> um, the intro to um Sukio, I also really liked. I'm a big fan of uh, any woman who kills. So when she showed up and just murks those dudes, and she's like smoking a pipe, and she's also got scars, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was cool because there's a there's a character in Final Fantasy 16 that smokes a pipe just like that. That's another like badass murdering girl, and I was like, yeah. damn. Listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to advocate for pipe smoking, but I will say there is something about a woman in media who has this specific set of, like, like the, the weird pipe, too. It can't be just the cigarette smoke for me. It has to be, like, the weird elongated pipe that she has, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I liked her introduction. I like when uh, Gintoki starts fighting some of the guards, and the way he fights is like I live by my own rules. And then like he like backflips to fight her, and then he hits her with the sword, but he slashes it while doing a backflip at the same time. <laughs> yeah, he jumps and like does the the little backflip twirl to hit her. <laughs> yeah, really good. I was like, oh, that's oh, that's good. That's how you know it's starting. If this is where. He's immediately on the attack like that, and yeah, and the the super detailed end screen where all of, where they're just throwing a bunch of kunai at them. I thought that was a cool. Yeah, way that's to how end. you know it's uh, it's actually an intense arc now because it's a real end screen. <laughs> you had the same reaction as me. He's like, "Oh shit!" The return of <laughs> the intense background. That's how we know shit's gonna start for real. Yeah, I thought it was a very good start to the arc. It's a good way to kind of jump you in, and it has mystery, and it also sets up, like I said in the beginning, some of the overall themes that will be handled throughout the other episodes as well, I think. So, good, good job on this one. Anything else to say, Zen, before we uh, move on? Uh, No, just a a good, an engaging first episode, which was nice, because the past two episodes of this have not, two episodes of Shonen Archive, I mean, have not been engaging on this level. (laughs) It has been nice to start an episode with like, oh yeah, this is just a super interesting way of doing it. Even for the dog one, it was the second one that was the better one of the two. Mm-hmm. And the first one was really, really like kind of interesting at first and then got really dumb really fast and like not interesting. This one stayed good like the whole way through, even when yeah. they were being stupid. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was a good mix of like... I think it helps a lot with the music as well. I really do feel like there's a the, the music budget gets increased like ten thousand fold when it's a serious arc. Yeah, well, you can tell. Like, it, it definitely feels like in serious arcs they try a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if that's true, but it certainly feels that way. They give the the feeling of it for sure. Yeah, the old razzle dazzle. Yeah, gotta, gotta, hit, gotta hit him with that. All right, let's go on to episode one forty which is, beware of those who use an umbrella on a sunny day. So, we start with a quick recap of everything that led up to the beginning of this episode, uh, beginning of this, where they're getting thrown kunai. And then after the kunai are thrown, Gintoki does a cool hero entrance where he tries to do, um, he appears and he, like, deflects all the kunai, and then he does, like, a whole, like, he tries to do a cool intro where he says, sorry, I'm late, and it's revealed that he's been stabbed in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and then this starts this bit that goes on for a, a while but <laughs> i was enjoying it the entire way where he's like this is one of my favorite bits in the whole arc it might be my favorite bit in the whole arc because it keeps it comes back a couple other times but it's so it's so good this conversation he starts having with Pachi where he's like you've been you've been stabbed it's like no i haven't been stabbed you've been stabbed no i haven't been stabbed uh, if the guy who's telling you who's been stabbed says he's not stabbed he's not stabbed you just admitted that you've been stabbed i need you to shut up <laughs> and my favorite part of the whole bit is when gintoki's like shit they're all gonna laugh at me because i'm being stupid <laughs> I'm, here's a yeah how do, how do we fake it and then sukoya fakes it for him <laughs> she's like wow you deflected all my knives 
He's like, oh, she's and so. Then... <laughs> After that, when he's like, you're visibly bleeding. He's like, oh man. And so they change the story to like, it was it was all I could do to shield the kid. And she goes. Wow, you really risked your life to save the kid. <laughs> and both times, Kentucky's like, she knows what we're doing. She's so nice. I can't be mean to her. She's being really nice to me right now. It's so funny. He's like, he can't handle that she's being so supportive and nice and, and just playing <laughs> along with him. And then the face he makes when it reveals that he's like, yes, I did it all for him. And they show the kid's head and he's been stabbed with a kunai. <laughs> he's got a knife in the back of the yeah. And then he goes into a, and it's a super aggro. He's like, I'll avenge him. And then it's revealed. He's like, actually, I saw everything. What happened. One of the girls on the opposite side says, I revealed it. Well, you deflected it. One of the kunai is he got hit by the backdraft, basically. And he has like this super intense eye as he's realizing like, oh, my God, everything has gone so completely wrong. And then she she starts saying like, it was my fault that he's dead. It's like, why are you playing along? Please, I did it. Yeah, like, the, at that point, Kentucky's even like, can you please stop being so nice to me? It's like, it's not, it's not nice. I'm the one who threw the kunai, <laughs> therefore it is my fault. And he goes like, no, it's not. It's my fault. He's the, I'm the reason he's dead. And she's like, no, no. And then finally, what happens is that she shoots them all with kunai and they all go down. <laughs> And they all die, and then she says, I'll take care of them from here. And she, as she, as the other guards go away, it's revealed that she actually hasn't killed them. She's hit them with rubber and kunai, um, which is really funny because the, the one that hit Gintoki was not made of rubber. It's also because it hit him in the head, and then it also hit him in the, uh, in the arm, <laughs> in yeah. the hand. <laughs> um... Well, also, yeah. they're not, they weren't rubber, they were throwing knives with giant suction cups on the tip. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, that's what they were. <laughs> that's right, they had uh, suction cups on them. Uh, so she starts to reveal why she was helping her. She was basically leading to an escape route, and she gives the backstory about how she got there. She says basically all the prostitutes that have been in there are children who have been kidnapped or were sold off one or the other. And once, you in, once you're in there, basically, you're in this endless night. That makes it very hard. You never see the sun again, and you're always it's stuck in darkness for the rest of your life. But the only person that isn't like that is Hinoa, which is Seda's mother. Um, for some reason, even though it's super dark and it's super messed up, no matter what, she seems like the sun. And she's always seems to be able to brighten everyone. And in the backstory, they show off how she's like... She's she was super um, ambitious, fighting back and not wanting to kind of fall in line with the other prostitutes because you know obviously um, it's bad. It's a bad sign. But uh, Hina, yeah, um, but Hina was the one who kind of tells her to like, hey, you're gonna have to learn to live like here, and you're gonna have to do it by your own attitude if that's the way you're gonna have to be able to survive here. And ever since then, she's kind of been on her side, and she's she says it as forsaken her womanhood, which is the scars on her face. So she scarred herself herself on purpose so she couldn't be used as a prostitute, and instead she would be used as a um, one of the guardians of the place. I really wish I remembered what they called them, but basically that's what I thought they just called them like the the guardians of yoshiwara or something like that it might just be that it might I don't be them having an organization name but maybe they did they maybe they did to be fair there was a lot to focus in on here as i was watching it <laughs> and the name of this specific group wasn't one of them that came into my head but either way that's what she says is that she scarred herself on purpose that's where her scars came from so she could specifically protect hinawa and always basically protect the sun and um they talk about how um So when the they she says like yeah the she's your mom and the way that he was able to escape is that basically if any woman gets pregnant in the underground uh, Yoshiwara what happens is that they are killed and then so is the baby as well and the reason is is that because there's so many high political people that basically all the women are forced to kind of always live down there because. I took it as, like, literally no bit of the information that comes down there. There's too many important people down there for there anything from it to escape it, and that's the reason why they kill him. But you could also see it as, like, the after the woman's given birth, they don't see her as useful to be a prostitute. Any one of those potential things could be a reason for why um, 
it's obviously it's a control thing. It's a control thing to control yeah. the women in there. It's absolutely a control. Think of any evil man thing that you can think of, and that is the reason why they're being killed. There's plenty of reasons, trust me. But anyway, they reveal on the night that when uh, Sato um, and her were Hinawa were running away, that um, the baby was able to get away, and when they were on the bridge, Hinawa was ready to die on the bridge as well. Um, she was. She always knew that the second she ran, that she was going to die. But as long as Seda was okay, she was. Uh, uh, um, as long as he was able to get away, then she was happy. And then it, he reveals basically through the way he says, like, it's very easy for me to like, hey, I can let a kid escape, but I can also just look under a bridge and kill any old man that has a baby. And it's revealed that he knows one hundred percent that the child where they are, and he's basically just trying to get her to calmly come back with him. And so she ends up, um, cause she was always planning to just die right there. And instead she chooses to go with him and not die. And that's the reason why she's still in there. Even though most women, when they escape, they're immediately killed. He wants to keep her basically locked in darkness for the remainder of her life for reasons that we'll get into later as they explain the reasons, but that's basically the reason why, um, so she says, like, you need to escape from here because if you act, if something happened to him, that that would actively kind of break her, and we can't have that happening. And as they're kind of talking about it, uh, as they talk about the whole backstory, Gintoki takes notice that there was someone behind him the entire time, and they get attacked by three members of the Yada clan, uh, two of which are important, and the other one, which is not. <laughs> but either way, they're all super strong. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny that the one who is not kind of looks like Nappa. <laughs> he does a little bit, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's mentioned. got a little. He's got a little Napa face going on. Oh, this is so he did, maybe it's a, a reference because he does basically share the same fate as Napa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Yado clan they're attacking. They're also related to. I don't know if they tell him right there, but they're related to the pirates that they've been messing with in previous one and in the Benizakara arc as well. Um. But anyway, they attack, and all of them are, like, com- they're, like, completely deaf, because these are, uh, these are fucking Yado, so they completely destroy them without much problem at all, including Kagura, who they, I think her, the one who attacks them is one, the only one that's wrapped in bandages, but the way by, <laughs> by the way that the flashbacks happen, it's very clear that is her brother that is attacking her, um... But basically, they lose the footing and they lose the kid as well, and it, they all kind of get plunged down into a bunch of stuff. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so they get after that. Uh, let me see. Is this where it actually ends? Yeah, that's where it is. Uh, after yeah, they after they attack them, that's where it ends. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just being sure, because again, a lot uh, well, of these... well, no, well, no, because it. It, it it ends after they attack them, but then Kagura also gets her a little bit where she's like, "That's my brother." Like she pretty much just says, "Like this guy." Yes. Is, yes. Okay. Is, okay. Yeah. Well, well this and, guy is the problem. The, yeah, this guy. The doing. she already was saying this guy's an issue because she can smell it off of, um, the first Yada that they're fighting, which is let me see if I can remember. It's if is it Abuto. Uh, Abuto, yes. yeah. Yes, Abuto, yes. okay. Abuto is the one that she can smell that he's a seasoned Yado, and there's, like, literally blood coming off of him. Um, Kamoi is her brother, and Nappa is, I think, Ungoyo. Yes, Ungoyo. <laughs> that is the, the third one. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the fodder one. <laughs> that's the fodder one. That's the bigger one. So, yeah, that's this episode. That's episode 140. Uh, Zen, how'd you feel about it? Good. Uh, it was really good. It was really cool when the uh, three Yado show up. I really like Kagura's brother just because uh, the way he looks. I think his design is really cool. Um, you know, funny enough, when I was watching Kagura's brother, I was thinking this feels like a Zen character. <laughs> yeah, it's totally. Yeah, if, if this were a fighting game, I would play this guy. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm all about this dude. Um, I thought that was cool, and also I like that we've got some some enemies that are kind of like you know marketed as these guys are like a serious threat because they're just outright stronger than us like because like, a lot of times we'll get enemies and then gintoki be like ah they hit me really hard but also oh, i'm gonna kick the shit out of them here in a minute um so it's cool to me that they're they're basically set up as like we are not gonna beat these guys like if we just fight them right now like we're not gonna win yeah 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 for sure 
the using the Yato specifically where it's like, well, Kagura is like a child, kind of like a child version of one of them and is already very hard to kill. You can't imagine what actual adult full grown. I know Umi Bozo, who we, we've seen, even though he's mostly kind of like a jokish character, we've seen him basically easily fucking take down entire armies by himself. <laughs> yes. So there's now three of them, and I think in the next – is it this episode they reveal it? where, Or is it the next one that the, also the main guy um, – uh, Hanawa is the, the the king of the Yados. I think it's in this uh, one where they say, like, the king of the Yados. they reveal it? I yeah, the, so, yeah. The, the lord of the night is also the king of yeah. the Yados because, because that – Yeah, because they say, like – oh my god, what are we going to do? And then Kagura's like, no, no, no. Like, you're worried about that guy, but the one you should be worried about is my brother. Mm, okay, okay. But either way, yeah, I, I do like that these dudes are serious. No joke. There's no joking around with these guys. They're fucking in- intense in any every single way. Um, and it's a, a different kind of villain, because a lot of the villains so far have been ones that I are human at the very least they're beatable yes. in the right sense stoppable yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um uh and anything more uh, to say What's uh that? no i just thought it was, it was it was kind of a setup episode where we kind of like mm-hmm. learn a little bit about the backstory um it it gets i mean not that, not that it's not like fucked up but it gets exceptionally more fucked up in the next few episodes so this one was just yeah. kind of it was good but it gets not as impactful in hindsight as we get to the next stuff. Yeah. The, 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 a lot of this episode is pretty fucked up as is because it is dealing with a red light district and it's also dealing with a lot of women being forced into forced prostitution and you think, how much darker can it actually get? And it turns out it yeah. can get much darker. Real bad. It can go, it gets, <laughs> it gets pretty rough <laughs> as it it's gets going. Bad. Yeah, and I was like, I am surprised that you're able to handle this in any sort of, some form of respectful way. Because it's already very tough when you have the, when you know just going in, like, yeah, these women have been, since child, since they were children, have been kind of groomed into this. And it's, it's th- that's where you're starting at. <laughs> and mm-hmm. where yeah, that's you're, the beginning point. Yeah, that's the beginning point. So it can only get more fucked up from here on in. But yeah, um... It is like you said. It is a little bit more of a building up, but I did I did like everything they're building up, and I do like a lot of what Sakoyo has also been uh, building up towards as well. I think she's really cool. She makes a uh, an immediate kind. I think I told a friend this. I was like, oh, I'm really liking this girl. He's like, there's jokes later on about how like she's too cool. <laughs> They've accidentally created a character <laughs> who is just too cool. <laughs> so, like I could see that because she she is just really. Like that bit at the beginning where she just played. It feels it's so weird because it feels like she belongs immediately. <laughs> where it's just yeah, like the, like the almost instantly. Yeah, almost instantly. Where you're just like, yeah, you just kind of make sense. It's like <laughs> a piece that that you didn't know was missing up until this exact point, but she works perfectly with the crew, especially that beginning part. That that easily just kind of wins me over for a lot of it, especially because it's you can take it as in the beginning you can take it as like, oh, she's just like for some reason being super supportive of all this but then when you learned like no she was actually just playing along and she's probably <laughs> at some level very frustrated over these idiots who will not just fall over and <laughs> like they likely wasted so much time of them blocking the entrance just because of how much time they <laughs> they wasted at the beginning trying to look cool <laughs> trying to save face <laughs> and not get laughed at <laughs> I also really like there's a moment where um, when Gintoki gets hit, where Kagura and the, the female guards are looking at him <laughs> and they have like this like ultimate look of disappointment as he tries to play off that he got stabbed, <laughs> which is really good. Uh, but yeah, it was a, another really good episode, uh, really building up to more stuff. And I will say the only thing that's a little bit of a bummer because I saw the ep- I always watch the episode previews just in case there's something that I miss. The episode preview does basically tell you the <laughs> the ending plot. 139 tells you exactly what 140 is because that reveal at the end, even though it's extremely well done, uh, you know it's coming <laughs> if you watched the previous episode preview. But oh, you know. see, I didn't. I, I skipped the previews 
when we're doing them in a row like this. But You're, that's so that. unbelievably smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, part of it is just to save time, especially there's a lot of it. Like I don't need to watch the promo; I'm about to watch the thing. So yeah, it's, it's once true. The, I let the credits roll because, of course, I do because it's anime credits. You always watch them. Yeah, of course. But then after that, uh, I I skip to the next episode uh, before. Makes the, sense. I'll the take the play. bullets just in case there's anything cool in there. <laughs> Just in case, I'll always make a note of something in there if they've done something. Oh, I forgot to mention, just because it was something that was funny that happened in the previous episode. I'll just mention it real quick. There's a part where um, uh, Catherine has an accent and it drops. And Atose asks her, hey, what happened to your accent? She's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've been on. I forgot it. Yeah. I haven't been in an episode. I love every. They do that joke all the time, and it's always funny. It is always funny. Like when Sasha's pissed, she's like, "I've only been in three episodes the whole season." I know. There's so really many. Games. Yeah, it's really, it's really. Funny. I always like it every single time it shows up. But just felt like making a note of it, just because I think it's funny. Let's move on to the next episode. Episode one forty one. Um, butting into a fight is dangerous. For a second there, I was like, budding? <laughs> no, okay, I get it, my bad. Budding into a fight. So anyway, <clears throat> the the episode starts off with Komoi and Hosan having a talk with each other. Um, In the meeting, they finally reveal that um, Komoi is the captain of the 7th Division of the Harasama Space Pirates, which is the division that Hosan himself founded. Um... And Komoi is basically talking shit, saying, like, you've gone soft, like, you're not the man that you once were, I should just, like, I don't even find any pleasure in the idea of killing you, that's how much I think you've gone in soft, and they end up fighting each other, where Hassan does, like, this insane fucking uppercut that is, like, borderline a Mortal Kombat finish, <laughs> and... <laughs> It's, uh, you think it's uh, Kamoi who got hit, but it turns out he switched with one of the um, the ladies that were inside there, and she instead got super crazy uppercutted and just got fucking yeah, she got destroyed, just, just eviscerated. That woman, <laughs> it, the soul left the body way before that punch connect. That's how strong he hit this woman, and they start fighting each other, and Kamoi starts talking about a thirst. Um, uh, he says, like, he, you try and quench your thirst, and you're trying to quench it with, um... He, his specific thirst isn't one that you can get it with women or alcohol like him. Um, it's a different... It's only one that he can find when he's fighting someone super strong. Um, it's a thirst for blood. So they start fighting each other, and they're going crazy. Um, uh, the... Hussan starts getting angry, because he's like, the when I'm fighting you... It really reminds me of that other guy who just wouldn't listen. Because even though he was the king of the Yatos, there was one person who would never listen to him. And that was Umi Bozo. And he has the exact same dyes as him. And it makes him continuously fight. And it makes him angry as well. And finally, they're about to do a clash. And they try and do... As when they're clashing, the other two Yatos that are there stop them. Uh, this is where the Nappa <laughs> Yato gets killed. Because uh, Ungoy, earlier on, when he tries to stop Kamoi, uh, Kamoi threatens him and says, like, if you try and interfere with me, I will kill you. Um, and Obuto, when he stops him, he, he when he stops Hosan, he loses his arm. And Ungoy is dead. But he stops the fight, and he says specifically Obuto stops it because he doesn't like it when the Yada fight each other. He has, like, a deep inner respect for the their bloodline as it is, and he hates it when they're fighting each other. But he said he considers it a victory if every after if those two are fighting and the only thing they lost was like a single arm and one dude, then that's okay. <laughs> yeah, he was like, okay, that's yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. It could have been so much worse, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's saying something. But based off of the way those two dudes were just going at it, I one hundred percent believe it. Um, yeah. So after the fights. Uh, basically, Kamoi is like, after he's stopped, he's like, you're not worth fight killing anymore. I just don't see it. He's like, I'm bored with you. I'm done. And he leaves. Um, back to Gintoki and the crew. They want to go inside the building. And uh, Sukoyo goes up to the guards, and, the, and they hear that a bunch of shit is going on in the background. Uh, and they're just like, uh, should we do anything about that? And they're just like, no, don't worry. Someone else got sent up there. But Sequoia shows up and she's like, yeah, it's a good idea that you did that. I want, you need to guard this door and make sure that no one suspicious attacks. 
And then immediately after she says that, Gintoki, Shinpachi, and Kagura show up with these, like, fake, huge boob <laughs> disguises. And they're like, ah, oh, yes, to stop all of those uh, suspicious people. And then they're immediately like, you're suspicious, you're not getting in here. <laughs> like, it immediately fails. Um, and they start talking... Uh, there's some classic, of course, dick jokes to talk about, like, obviously all that pounding is because he's got a giant cannon, if you know what I'm saying. And she's like, shut up. Please just shut up. <laughs> just shut the fuck up, man. Shut up, you silicon bimbo, is basically what he says to her. But yeah, the Sukoyo basically, it makes it seem like, oh, she convinces them that they're okay, she lets them through. But it's revealed that they knew all along that there wasn't anything... That that they had already betrayed him, basically, and they were walking into their death. Um, and a whole bunch of the guard women are there, and they throw knives. And they do the bit again where, <laughs> after they throw the knives, uh, Gintoki tries to play it off cool, and he has been stabbed in the head <laughs> by one of the kunai. And then Kagura says, like, yeah, how lame is it to be stabbed? I think the only person that didn't get stabbed is Jinpaji, because Kagura gets stabbed in the head, and she tries to take out the knife and hide it. Well, yeah, G- Gintoki pulls the knife out, and he's like, yeah, well, I'm fine. And then Kagura's like, yeah, idiot, no one got stabbed. And then it pans over to her, and she's holding one behind her back while she's <laughs> bleeding from the head. And then uh, Sukoyo also makes a reference, and then they see that she's got nothing but kunai on her back. Yeah, she's got, like, six in her back. He's like, I'm not even going to mention what I see here. Um, and then they, they start fighting and they said like, okay, uh, the, the Hyaka, okay, that's what they're called, the Hyaka, okay. Um, they start, they start to charge them and then Kentoki mentions about how he's in, he's in a brothel looking for a woman, but flat chest don't do it for him. He needs gigantic boobs and that's when they reveal the boobs were for a reason. They're giant, um, smoke, they're, <laughs> they're smoke giant bombs. explosives. Yeah, they're giant smoke bombs. Yeah, and then he basically says, light him up. And then the Sequoia, in the coolest move ever with her smoke, just puts it on fire for him. Yeah, he, she lights the fuse with the pipe. It's so badass. It is. Oh, this woman's so good. <laughs> but yeah, she lights him up. Uh, they go off. Um, and as they go off, it cuts back to Kamoi. Um, and the... <laughs> his The dude who lost his arm is bandaging it up. And... Um, he basically says, like, no matter what, I'm still going to be here and I'm going to be fighting this because I'm in Hassan's, uh, Hoys- Hoysan's debt. <clears throat> Kamoi says, like, okay, whatever. I plan to eventually kill all my superiors, so it doesn't matter to me what happens here. <laughs> um, so Gintoki, Shinpachi, and Kagura and Sukoyo are trying to make their way past through the smoke bomb. They don't want to kill any of the women. Um... Sequoia decides to stay behind and she'll basically hold them off for him so that they stop going after them. And um, Gintoki asks for her pipe and says, like, hey, I'll, I need these for the explosives. I'll make sure to give them back to, to you when you come back to us alive. And she goes, like, okay, that's fine. And she gives it to him and they run off. And as they're running off... Uh, the Yato, the Abuto comes out and he comes out through the walls and he's surprised to see that they're still alive. And Kagura and Shinpachi decide to f- fight him. Kagura wants to fight him, her, uh, wants to fight him herself, but Shinpachi's like, "No, you're gonna need me." And she's like, "You're literally weak. What the hell are you going to do for, for anything? You'll hold me back." She's like, "Whatever. I'm not weak. We can fight him." But he's like, "Okay, they're gonna hold them back and they're gonna fight each other." Um. And then as they're fighting, the um, Abuto says, like, <clears throat> oh, yeah, you're doing pretty well for a bunch of humans. And then Kagura takes offense to that as she, like, smacks him across the wall. She's like, don't don't compare me to these country bumpkins. I'm a city girl. And she spits out blood. And then that's where it ends right there. <laughs> that's where the episode ends with I, that. I think my favorite line is when she goes, don't compare me to these rednecks. <laughs> to these rednecks. I'm 100% city girl. <laughs> 100% city girl. <laughs> spits out blood <laughs> tell me what you think Zen uh, super good not the best one because I think the best one's probably the next two like combined are probably the best one um, still a super good episode I really like the bit with the smoke bomb boobs um, I really like the bit where Gintoki's like I'm taking this and she's like come on 
and I wanted to smoke before I die. And he, he just goes, no. <laughs> I thought that was fucking hilarious. And she's like, let me have one more smoke before I die. And he goes, no. No. <laughs> you can get back to get this back when you come back to us alive. <laughs> uh, yeah, re- quality stuff. We're, we're, we're in Gintama good period right now. Yeah, we're yeah, we're in for some real good shit with this. It's It really is just like, oh, it feels so good to be just so happy, positive about every episode. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the fighting between the two dudes at the beginning is a good way, as, like you said, establishing just how fucking scary these guys are, while with him just killing that, that woman with such crazy ease to the point where you just, like, didn't even see him. Yeah, she, like, smashes through the ceiling, and she's, like, hanging there, just bleeding. Yeah, to the point where, like, it happens, and then the, the other one that's alive is like, what, what the fuck just happened? (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) It's terrifying. I like the brief um, flashback of Umibozo when you see him when he had his full hair and you see that actually he was cool at one point. <laughs> yeah, he was actually super cool looking. Super bad. I like how that fight ends with him saying, I gotta take a shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm sorry, I have to take a shit. He's like, that was the only time a battle of mine has ever ended. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, I like kind of seeing the way Komoi... Uh, his, like, brain processing is kind of going. And they kind of build this thing up with him where it's, like, you never know 100% what he's going to do or what his motives are. Where you're, like, feeling from... And I especially feel that way when he eventually goes up in the in the, the coming up episodes where he's with the kid. Where I'm just like, I, I, I It's borderline, like, stranger danger. Please stay away from that kid. I don't... <laughs> please... I don't know what you are actually going to do next. I understand for the basis of, like, he's only interested in strength, but the way that he actually exudes himself and the way he acts is just so hard to actually pin down, where I'm just, like, afraid for any character that's in his general vicinity (laughs) that something bad is just going to happen to them. And yeah, I think it's always cool whenever a villain does a Vegeta move where he kills one of the subordinates. And I think <laughs> there's a reason why Vegeta is as popular as he is, and half of that reason is the way he smokes <laughs> Nappa with no problem. Yeah. <laughs> they do a lot of cool visual misdirection stuff in this episode, too. Like I like, uh, obviously, the bit where it looks like Kamui gets hit, and then it's not him. Um I like the bit where Kamui jumps up and he, like, kicks uh, Hosen in the face and there's blood splatter and then they turn the camera around and the blood splatter is actually from Kamui's leg because Hosen, like, stabbed him in the leg with his fingers. Um, And then when the two Yato, like, underlings, Abito and the the fodder guy... Nappa. uh, ...jump in the way... Yeah, Nappa. When they jump in the way to stop it, uh, you see the arm hit the ground and it looks like... um, Hosen has like a stump arm up against the umbrella so it looks like the umbrella like cut his arm off and then he rips his arm out of a hole in the umbrella and then it shows you that it was the other guy's arm that he that he knocked off yeah they, yeah you're right they do do a lot of that it was it, a lot of good stuff going around here which is funny because in a later episode they talk about how their fight budget has been significantly lower than a lot of other <laughs> shonens yeah um, but they're making their every single fight that they've that is in this arc is very visually interesting in some kind of way or cool in another. So I think they do a, a well a good job with that. That when you're watching it, it's just like oh, it's also a good way of like showing a different types of strength as well. Just to really hammer in home how strong the Yato are. The way that they fight is just like you just don't know where the general direction of the fight is going to be going. Just because when you're fighting someone that strong, it could be like, oh yeah, it's a simple thing of like, looks like they got his arm. No, it's not his arm. That's not my blood. It's yours. It's the the equivalent of call an ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> Is every single yeah. one of their fights. <laughs> Very well done. And yeah, I like the... Oh man, it's just, it's just really good. And it just kind of kept on going. I actually don't have... A buttload of notes, because at this point, I was just kind of enjoying watching it as we went along. <laughs> and that's how I know shit's good, is when <laughs> I only take sp- as sparing notes as I can and sparing screenshots, because I'm just like, okay, I just, here, here's some quick thoughts, and I'll remember for later, but man, a lot of good stuff going on in this arc. And a lot of cool stuff building up towards as well. 
And I can't wait because I would, let's just get going right to this next episode because this next episode, uh, no, I think it might be my favorite episode of the arc actually. I think it's like you, it's like, as we talked to the other ones, I think it's between this one and another one, but this one's really good. This one is really good, yeah. It is really damn good, so. <clears throat> Let's talk about episode 142. Life is a series of choices, and I said, uh, this is the one note I have here. Gintama episodes never go well when they title it like this. Mm-hmm. When they use a semi-serious title, that's when you know when the, the when the title is not the chicken burrito you leave out two days after it can still be eaten. That's when you know that the arc is no <laughs> that you know that when it's like this, where it's just like a single easy sentence, you know that some shit is about to go down in it. Um, all right, let's go back into it. Uh, we have. Do they start with? Okay, yeah, they do. Okay. Um, Shinpachi and Kagura are fighting, and they're fighting Abuto, um, but Abuto is able, is able to very easily kind of get one up on them. It's, like, not very hard. He's hitting them really hard. Um, they're trying to fight back, but it's not going very well. Eventually, Abuto stomps, um, his foot onto Kagura's head, um, and they start to mention about how, like, uh... I think he says, like, specifically he reminds him of her, of Komoi in a certain bit, because Komoi is someone who is guided by his blood. He follows his bloodline 100%, the Yada blood that is in his body. Um, but Kagura is someone who is actively trying to fight against it. And she's fighting against her inner instinct of what is it, what it means to be a Yado. Um... And she also considers him at this point, considers her like a disgrace because the, the Yado blood to him is something that is uh, sacred and something that is worth fighting for. And it's stupid for her to kind of fight against her better instincts. Um, Shinpachi cuts him off and tries to fight him and he hits him with a sword. And he says like, hey, that's real good if I still had an arm there. He was basically using it, like you said in the beginning, a lot of trickery to the way that they fight. To even to the point where he didn't even tell him that he didn't have another arm there. He just let him assume that he had an arm there so that when he attacked it, he could get back on him and like that. I never even realized that until you brought it up how they were fighting in the previous one. It's like, oh yeah, they do kind of fight with a lot of like misdirection in what they do. But yeah, he gets the better of him. Um, he gets Shimpachi at the end of the staff and he starts smashing him against the roof. And basically he tells Kagura, as he also has Kagura pinned down... And he tells Kagura, you either need to choose to have yourself be killed or to watch him die. Uh, because no matter, because he could use the, uh, the staff himself to stab her, and then that would prevent him from killing Shinpachi. Um, um, Shinpachi ends up saying something that pisses him off, saying, like, it's only a quiz. And that kind of makes him angry, and he goes like, well, I guess I made my decision. And he chooses to kill Shinpachi right at that moment. <laughs> yeah, when Shinpachi, like, shit talks him. Yeah, when Shivaji shit talks him, and he starts pushing him further and further, uh, slowly killing him, and Kagura is like telling him to stop, and then something awakens inside of Kagura, and she has a big moment where like the inner workings, she the, the similar to a, a Super Saiyan like rage. This is a point where a character has just been completely just like you, fu you fucked with Krillin now, and now it's time to get <laughs> the clap back as her inner Yato blood awakens. Uh, she breaks through his fucking foot with her bare hands. And then he realizes, like, oh, no. I As he's fighting her, uh, he's like, I thought I there was a... I did, like, what I had inside you was a beast that was being chained. He's like, that's not a beast. That's a monster. <laughs> and she starts making his way towards her, completely fucking him up. It gets to the point where he's basically dead. There's, he has her pinned down. Um... He ends up landing outside the roof. And even while they're fighting him, it's it's really a fucking cool fight. Because she's like headbutting him, just completely... Completely washing this dude that we have seen up to this point have, has been amazing at fighting. Um, but yeah, it gets to the point where Kakura is going to give the killing blow. And he tells her, basically, yeah, do it. Kill me. Um... And right before she's about to deliver it, Shinpachi stops her, and he gets her to basically calm down, as he's like, that's not... 
the the thing I said I was here to protect Kagura and I'm going to protect her in every single way in form. She's not the Kagura we know is not worth it for like we would lose Kagura if she killed you and you're not worth that. Um you're not worth losing that person who's precious to us, so I'm not going to let her do it. And the roof starts to break under them. And that's when he, as he's falling down and they're falling to their deaths, he says, um, he says to, um, life is just one important choice after another. Go ahead and see how far your naive choices can take you. And he saves their life as he pushes them forward. And he says, either kill, uh, kill, kill, kill the old man or get killed by him. The choice is up to you. And as he's, as he's kind of falling to his death, to his implied death, he says, um, uh, I hate killing my own kind. And that's kind of the last we see of him for the foreseeable future. And then the other half, which is the other thing that's happening here as well, is that we see um, uh, Sukoyo, as she's fighting off the others in her group. And as she's fighting them off, she's like getting hit by a bunch of like kunai. As she's getting as she's getting hit, she's like trying to deflect them, but she's not fighting back. Um, and as she's fighting, she they're asking him, "Why aren't you fighting back? Do you just not see us as worthy as like fighting or killing?" And she goes, "Like it's not that. It's just like the way that we've lived our life specifically. I don't really have the right to like the way we've always treated women here is that we killed them whenever they broke the rules. So it's not in my, it's who am I to actually fight against the very rules that I held other women to? It just doesn't seem right to me." But I won't fight back. And she starts to say, like, the way that I've always seen it is that I was trying to... I hated this place with all of passion, but then I still chose to protect it with my life because I thought that's what um, would protect her. But I realized I was just making excuses for myself. And I've been living what is basically a lie up until this point. Um, and I'm not going to live that way anymore. And if you're going to, the only thing I'm really interested in now is to stop you from getting to them. And that's good enough for me. And she's like getting like stabbed by the kunai at this point to a crazy degree. And just as it looks like they're going to deliver the final blow to her, cause she's dodged as many as she can and she can't dodge them anymore. Um, all the women put down their knives and they say like, she was the sun to us, but basically you're like the moon. And both the sun and the moon have their own kind of light and their own kind of radiance. And they both need to exist at the same time. And they basically tear it down and we reveal that what she's done to all the women that were supposed to be killed is that she marked them like she did her and made them join the guard themselves so that they wouldn't have to die. Um, and they have all been, all of them are basically in there now. She's basically been hiding in. That's what she's been doing this entire time. So she's been trying to live by the same standard of trying to save the women the best that she can in this specific situation. And they cut to her when it looks like it's she's probably going to go, but then we it's revealed later on she's she ends up being okay, but yeah. Those that's the two things that are happening in this episode. And both of them are kind of playing... Like, in the beginning, literally, the name of the episode is Life is a Series of Choices. And they kind of reflect that in both kind of side A and side B stories that are being told here about the specific choices that people have made and kind of having to live with them. And also dealing with the consequences of them. And there's no amount of me describing this episode to say how good this fucking episode is. You should just watch this episode, because holy shit, the... Yes, it's a really good episode. There's no, there's no way to really explain it. Uh, no, it's, it's, I tried my best, but let me. I'm, I, I cannot do it justice. You have to see this episode. <laughs> Go ahead, Zed. You try and tell your thoughts on it. Uh yeah, it's really good the whole way through. Kagura going full Yato mode was extremely badass. Uh, when she like opens it off by grabbing him in the leg and like snapping his chin by like punching his fucking. <laughs> leg with her broken arm to break his yeah. leg uh super badass and she starts like obviously she's got the crazy slasher face on and it's awesome when she's fighting him and like her broken arm is just like dangling like in the air behind her while she's doing all these crazy kicks and shit yeah. um after also after cool. he told her <laughs> that told her specifically your punches don't mean anything to me because i can feel it that you're holding them back Mm-hmm. And then she immediately just starts kicking the shit out of him when she enters his yeah, mode. Absolutely beating his ass. Um 
I like when uh, he hits her and knocks her down, and she ends up being completely fine. And he's like, come on, I was kind of trying right there. <laughs> thought that was funny. Um, and then I liked a little bit at the end, too, where uh, Shinpachi grabs her, and he's like, I don't want you to... I don't want you to turn into what you hate because, you know, you won't you won't recover, like, emotionally if that happens. I thought that was nice. Mm-hmm. And obviously all the stuff with uh, Sukuya was really good when they all kind of, like... Her refusal to hurt them kind of turns them around and, and makes them join her side. I thought that was cute. That was a sweet yeah. little moment there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, uh, it's an, a really well-done episode. Like, the amount of... There's so much that you can dissect from it that it feels like in this short amount of time, we and Zen would have to do like an entire breakdown. We, we that... would have to this episode and the next one we would have to do like alone to <laughs> to really break them down. To, beyond like just, uh... it would literally be like a scene by scene talking because that's how deep I think. Actually, like, not the... even that. It would be like this one, the next one, and the one after that. Yeah, there's <laughs> like they're all really good. They are really good in the. The specific themes that they explore are very well done, down to every... Like, every single detail, I think, works perfectly. Both of the stories that are being told are fitting with each other, and even the title itself. It all goes back, as you think about it, life is a series of choices, and the specific choices that they've made, and the way that they've been made. It all just blends together to just make it a fucking fantastic episode. This episode, specifically for me, I was just like on the edge the entire time going like, God damn, this is just so fucking good. Mm. It's just so fucking good. It is. It really is. <laughs> and that's when you know when it's good because me and Zed just don't have... It just doesn't feel like anything we could say could truly make it just justice other than say like, yo, 142 episodes in, 100% worth it to yeah. go with. And I'm just saying, like, yeah, make it. Trust me. Although, if if by the time you get to 142 episodes, if you are not a fan of the series, tell me your name so I can avoid you. (laughs) So I can. (laughs) That's how I feel. (laughs) But yeah, a fucking well done episode. Absolutely fucking fantastic. And let's go on to the next one. Uh, this is definitely feels like all the, uh, the, the those people who have been saying, like, oh, just wait, just wait, just wait. And I, I know it feels weird as you're going for the current order, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. It definitely feels worth it now. Yes. Oh. It sure fucking does. It really does. So let's go on to the next episode. Episode 143. Those who stand on four legs are beast. Those who stands on two legs, guts and glory, are men. Holy shit. <laughs> what a name of an episode. Let's go. <clears throat> so we cut back to Obito's final words. Um, and Shipachi being kind of shocked that he would save their lives. And he then hears Kagura and sees that she's uh, fine. But Kagura is frustrated because she feels like... Um, she didn't lose to Abito, but she lost to herself and she had become like her brother, which is something she never wanted to do. And she says, I'm just so frustrated because it feels like I want to be strong to protect everyone, but I'm just not there. And then he says, like, don't listen. I'm also, I wasn't that big of a help there either. So we're both weak as it stands, but we can try and protect that. We can try and, we can improve and we can try and be better from this point on. And she goes, yeah, they they both kind of agree, like, yes, we can, but then we have to protect the things that are in now, so they get ready to go protect the things that they've come to protect. And we cut to Kamoi, who is just killing a bunch of Kyaka for no reason. He's just... Uh, he then sees... Um, I don't know, it was in the previous episode where he teamed up with Seda where to say, like, I'm going to take you to your mom. It might have happened uh, during the last one. Yes. I think it was the end of the last one. Okay, so um, the, either way, at some point he says to say, I'm going to go take you to your mom. I'm going to go take you. He's like, I want to see the woman who would cause this dude who I knew to basically fall. I need to see for myself what's so special about this woman, so I'm going to take you to her. It's not going to be that big a deal. And as he's killing him, he says, I kill with a smile because of the the last thing a person deserves to see before they die is a smile to greet them. So he also says, anytime I'm smiling, I'm ready to kill. 
And Seda immediately gets away from him because he's smiling. He's like, that was just a joke. It's okay. <laughs> I don't plan to kill you. They reach the door. Um, and as they reach the door, he starts yelling, Mom. And he goes to open the door and she tells him to go away. Um, and he basically starts... Uh, he takes the thing away from the door, tries to open it. But you see that it's locked from the other side. Um, and he calls her Mom. And then that's when the... Um, uh, Hinawa shows up and he says, like, if you want your mom, here's your mom. And he tosses bits of a hair that he has remaining. And he says, that's your mom. What actually happened was all those years ago, he was like, do you really think that a high courtesan would have been able to be pregnant without anyone knowing? Like, he, what actually happened is that someone got pregnant and then a bunch of women kept her in secret because they knew that she was going to die and that's how you were born. So your mom, whatever's left of her, is that hair that I have for you right there. You can take that and you can go because that's your mom. Um, and he kind of is telling him, like, yeah, this entire reason you're here, it's pointless. That's not your mom. And then he, as he's saying this and he tells us a real reveal, he's like, oh, yeah, this kid's going to go away. But he doesn't. Instead, he starts banging on the door even harder. And he says, like, I, I, I know that's my mom on the other side. You're telling me this woman literally risked her entire life to get me to safety is not my mom? I don't care that we're not blood related. That's my mom. And so he starts trying to break down the door to get to him. And as he's like knocking on the door, in comes in the so in comes in Gintoki's sword, and the sword breaks down the door. Um, and Gintoki says, "Because uh, someone says, who are you?'" He's like, "I'm just a girl loving playboy." And <laughs> as he enters, he goes like, "Oh yeah, that has to be his mom." What other woman uh, openly weeps like that? if it's not for their child and they have, they finally are reunited and they embrace. Um, and Gintoki starts talking shit about his club saying like, this is a shitty place <laughs> to, to have a woman. <laughs> I'm trying to get a drink here. And all I see are like women crying. Like that's nothing like this place. This, this is a garbage place to actually have a drink. What I want, give me a, an outside room in a tiny place with a, a little glass bottle to drink with a beautiful woman. I'll take that any day. To give me a snack bar that's filled with a bunch of hooligans, and I will gladly take that. Um, give me a cabaret club featuring a gorilla woman, and as long as there's joy and laughter, I'll be there. But this place that's like stained with women's tears, nah, <laughs> I'm not having it. <laughs> and so. After his big ass, a uh, huge hero entrance, they start fighting, but not before um, Hassan goes to go pick up his weapon, which is the umbrella, and he picks up this huge ass umbrella <laughs> that is uh, yeah, it's fucking giant. Yeah, it's like a decoration on somewhere else, but no, it's it's his actual weapon for umbrella fighting. And then Gintoki goes to pick up his sword, which he left over there, and he says, "Like, do you really think that your st stupid sword can?" Uh, shatter the chains that I've made on this place. And he says, "Like, yo, I'll chat. I'll shatter that chain in a single blow. That's how positive I am. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you." Um, and then they do a like a leap forward to each other as they scream and they start fighting. Um, Hosan has the immediate like uh, advantage of everything he's doing. Uh, they start fighting back and forth, but it's very clear that Kentucky is outmatched. Uh, Gintoki even mentions, like, a any, like, misstep, it feels like, <laughs> like, he's, like, this fighting this guy is intense. Like, any, like, little thing, it feels like my soul wants to leave its body, <laughs> and it's, I can't make a single breath or a single blink, because it, if I just do it wrong, I'll, I'm dead. Um, and eventually he does kick, um, he hits Kentucky and he sends him flying all the way to a wall, um... And he, like, starts grabbing at his arm to try and, like, uh, crush him. But Kintoki's able to stop him, and he's uh, talking shit to him the entire time. Uh, Hassan says, you're doing pretty good for a human, but this is basically the limit of the samurai. The what You guys lost the Amato. Like, how, am I, how you expect me to lose to a group of people who couldn't even defend their own world? And your world is, is null and void to me. Like, all your women, all your food, that's mine. That's that's just the way of the jungle, and that's the way it's going to be. Um, 
And as they're fighting, um, he, while he's giving this speech about all this, uh, Gintoki pulls out the pipe and he stabs him in the eye. Um, and, and that gives him enough time as he falls back and he slumps down into the wall and he tells Seda to run away. And Seda says, like, no, I can't run away. You, um, we're going to be leaving here together. It seems like unfair that uh, I brought you here. I can at least see you through this into the end. He's like, you didn't bring me here. I came here for my own dumbass reasons. Now get your mom and get going. And don't make me look like, don't make me into a loser again. And as he says that and his back is against the wall, he gets fucking kicked right into the concrete wall s- smoke coming out of his body and you don't see his face and from this <laughs> they say out his name and you can only assume that he has died from this moment obviously we know he's not dead because we know there's a lot about 200 more episodes <laughs> to go from here because <laughs> yeah. he's the main character because he's yeah. the main character but they still do a very good job with uh how <laughs> fucked up he gets from this one specific kick where he does look like he's like half dead from this point and that is episode 143. Oh, how do you feel, Zen? Uh, super good. One of my favorite moments in all of this was when uh, he stabs Hosen in the eye with her pipe. Mm-hmm. That shit was sick. Um, I kind of like Kamui, like, just kind of vibing and watching, like, not participating in either side. Yeah, just kind of watching. Um, like, he even says, yeah. he was like, hey, don't worry about it, old man. I'm not going to fight. I just want to check this out. <laughs> we. Mm-hmm kind of interested here uh i really like yeah the the but the clash where gintoki is holding back the strike and he's like i literally like it feels like every bone in my body could break at literally any point like (laughs) at any moment from now i could just shatter um and i really like the uh the bit where you know he's like he he the where Gintoki's kind of like, yeah, he's right that we did lose, but like, I can still win right here if you can just escape with your mom. And I thought that was sweet. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good stuff here. Um, a lot of dark stuff, too. I The the bit where he just has that hair, it immediately made me go, did he really just keep that hair just to fuck with this kid all these years later? Because <laughs> that was my immediate thought. I was like, oh damn but also just the idea of just like here you go here's whatever your mom has left now get out of pick her up and get out of here <laughs> i'm so done with you <laughs> leave here um <clears throat> i like the moment where kentoki shows up and he breaks down the door and he starts talking about how he doesn't like to see women cry about where and he also starts shit talking his place saying like, it's it's not anything because it's not a place that actually has any joy to it. It's just a place that it has women in it, and that's it. Like you can, <laughs> I need to go to a place that has more S- that's more S and M friendly. This isn't really my vibe, <laughs> <clears throat> which is really good. I like it when he put, reveals that his parasol, which is <laughs> bigger than fucking him, <laughs> and he came yeah, from the a giant, like two handed umbrella yeah super huge it's part of a a completely different statue but no that's his actual weapon um and i like that he'll say like do you really think you can destroy my chains he's like oh yeah i'm gonna take that shit down with a single strike (laughs) just to watch oh it's so good and then i also like just how much he gets his ass kicked throughout on the entirety of it he's like oh yeah he talks a lot of shit but then when he actually is fighting him he's like oh no (laughs) yeah the guy is not to be fucked with no, not in any single capacity at all. He's just got his number in every single conceivable way. To the point where Gintoki's like, nah, dude, if you run away, that's a victory for me. <laughs> you have to know where your victory lies, and then my victory right here is that you and your mom are together. And that's what I want. Um, but yeah, another fucking banger after banger episode. This one was really good. Um... <clears throat> enjoyable the entire way around and when the fighting started i was just like yes <laughs> i need you to beat this man so bad <laughs> that's nothing more that i want right now than for you to kick this man's ass but of course it can't come that easily and he gets absolutely obliterated yes <laughs> very well done though mm. <clears throat> and let's go on to the next one because we're gonna all the things that we need to talk about, I feel like we need to just go to the next one and keep talking about it from that point on. <laughs> and we will yeah, continue our thoughts. Okay. Next episode title, 
don't trust bedtime stories. Um, where the um, <laughs> oh yeah, um, I don't know. Was it this episode or is it the next one? Okay, no, it's not. Okay, it's the next one that starts off with that bit where they start talking about anime filler. <laughs> Yeah, it's the next episode. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's not this one. Okay, so we cut back from here. Um, uh, it looks like Intoki's number has been gone. Um, um, Kumway tells him, like, hey, are you going to let a dying man's final words to you go to waste? And he goes, like, okay, you're right, he's right, I have to go to my mom. He goes to his mom. She tells him, you have to go, I can't leave here. And he goes, like, what do you mean? We can leave. And then it's that's when it's revealed that Hinawa and his just crazy madness to keep her where she is um, and lock her away forever. He's actually prevented her from being able to escape, and he has actually um, cut off her Achilles tendons. Uh, they show like they don't show him actually cutting it off; they just show the scars that she has left. So she's actually not able to run at all. She's not able to walk at all, not with any assistance. Um, and so he starts saying, like, oh, yeah, you just try to keep her here the best you can. Like, you, it's not enough for you to have the bird. You also have to clip her wings to make sure that she never escapes the cage. Um, and he goes, like, yeah, that, you know, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's what I have to do. <laughs> and that's what I'm <laughs> going to do. You're damn right I'm going to do that. And he starts talking about the sun. Um, he says that the, the thing that he wants most isn't specifically a woman, it's the sun itself, uh, because the sun is just, like, um, it's super deadly to the Yato, and to him specifically, and that's why he's also created a place where there no sun can ever get to, just because he knows for a fact that no matter what, no matter what he does, no matter how hard he fights, uh, he will never be able to have the sun. It's like the one thing that he'll just never be able to have. But this girl, for whatever reason, she's able to radiate just like the sun. And that kind of makes him want to keep her and also wants to break her and also doesn't want her to to shine anymore. He wants her to be basically kind of like him. Um, and as he's saying all this and he's going, waxing on about the sun, it cuts to Seda and his response is, I'm fuck you, I'm going to carry my mom out of here. Um, a mother ca- uh, carries her son and who who's to say a son can't carry his mom or uh, yeah it's uh it's the parents the mother carries the son until the son becomes old enough and then it becomes his job to carry his uh aging mother he says mothers cuz he technically has more than one mother <laughs> cuz he can he's like oh yeah my the birth mom and then this my mom they're both my moms and then <laughs> After he says that, where he's like, I carry my mom's, because like, do you have a bunch of kunai come flying towards Hassan, and uh, Sukiyo uh, is there, and she says, do you have enough room for your 49 other mothers? <laughs> yeah, when they all appear. Yeah, it's it, so good. <laughs> it is really good. Um, so, uh, Hassan is just like completely baffled. He's like, why? <laughs> why are you doing any of this? And Sukiyo says, like, hey... Um, I'm here specifically because I was promised the fucking sun by Gintoki, and I haven't seen no damn sun. Um, he's lied to me. That's basically why I'm here. And then she throws a knife at him, and he catches it. And then he says, um, the sun did rise, and he considers all the women that are rising up above him as their own separate suns, their own separate flames. He's like, the sun has definitely risen here. And he gets up from being super fucking beat up and he picks up a sword and he's just like, <laughs> even with his mangled body, he does a cool sword pose. Yeah, he does. Kentucky's so fucking cool. He is. He's just so unbelievably cool. So now here we go. Round two. Rukumoy is also very remarked about like, hey, um, I'm surprised this dude's still alive, to be honest. Uh, and then he starts to, he apologizes to Sukio. He's saying, Hey, I'm sorry. Your pipe, um, your pipe's ruined. And she says like, you're going to have to buy me a new one on the surface when we come back here. And I, I get a good shit too. That was a, an expensive brand called bitch. <laughs> you better <Yeah. laughs> this is a bitch brand. Fucking... <laughs> and then he goes like, this is why I hate women <laughs> or women like this. You know, they always want more out of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, then they all start charging to Hassan 
and they start to do an all-out blitz as him as every single one it's now one verse 50 versus one dude as they all come towards him um he gets he blocks both uh, Sukiya and Gintoki, but he gets attacked by the other members of the guards, and then he responds back by picking up those guards and throwing them right back at them. <laughs> um, as he's doing this, they're talking and they're monologuing. Seta decides to leave with his mom, and the others are trying to get him out there. And that's when the rebellion, uh, rebellious women end up fighting with the ones that are still loyal to him. And as they're fighting there, his mom says to him, like, hey, the only way that we can actually beat him is like, listen, um, I need you to run. And he's like, I'm not going to leave you. He's like, no, 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 I'm going to be with you. But what do we need to fight back? Um, what we're going to do is that we're basically going to put the sun back in here because he's been here down so long. What's going to happen to him when he gets exposed to just bright ass sun right from the get go? Um, so he goes, okay, he's going to go to the command room and he's going to open up the doors so that the sun can come in. And that's when Kagura and Shinpachi are there and they're going to escort him to go do it. Um, so they all go off to go do that and they go back to them fighting. Um, as they're fighting, um, I think, as, yeah, as they're fighting, Gintoki goes for... He goes for his sword because he's pay- he's picked up a sword, but he didn't pick up his original sword. So as he's going to go fight him, he starts saying, like, no matter what, I have to kind of advance and I need to fight him. Um, and as he's fighting him, he's, he puts him forward the sword bit, the, 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 the actual dangerous sword bit. It's been cu- like at this point, he's like, I think he's cut the he destroyed the sword with like a punch at some point earlier in the yeah, fight. Yeah, he snapped it in half earlier in the fight. Yeah, so even though he's fighting with a snapped in half uh, sword, he fights back and um, he breaks the sword even more. But he doesn't realize he has his original sword because he was f- hyper focused on the one that actually looks like a weapon. So he's finally able to get a solid hit to him as he um, he finally like hits him with the sword and he hits him with like a really good just like whack in the face. Um, and it's also revealed that Sukiyo was the one who threw the the sword to him as well when he did that. Um, but yeah, it ends with him hitting him with the sword. Um, and that's where the episode ends for now. But it's the first actual legitimate hit that they were actually able to do to him. And yeah, there you go. How do you feel about this episode, Zen? Crazy good. Uh, the scene of everyone appearing to, to help was fucking awesome. Uh, the fact that Hosen is still fighting like 50 people all at one time is fucking cool. Uh, and I like the plan of like, you know, Yato are vulnerable to the sun, so we're gonna let the sun in because not only is he a Yato, but he has been hiding from the sun for so long that like he must have like no resistance to it whatsoever. Um, and I like that, you know, some of them were still loyal to him because it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for the entire place to be like, okay, we're going to revolt now. Like, some of them would still be afraid <laughs> and not wanting to, to cross him. So, yeah, yeah, I thought that was cool, too. Mm. <clears throat> Very well done. A lot of good back and forth here as well with uh, a lot of philosoph- philosophizing. That's not right the way we're ready for it. Philosophizing? How am I not saying this word right, Zen? Go ahead. Philosophical, oh. but in the... Uh... Philosophically? Philosophically, thank you so much. This is why you're my the tag team partner here. <laughs> Philosophically, they are kind of waxing back and forth, saying like, "Oh yeah, this is what I believe in. This is what you believe in," and they're fighting back on it. A lot of good shit in between a lot of the fighting. I like a little bit of <laughs> poetry in between my <laughs> sick fights. <laughs> I think it makes uh, it uh, the world a better place. Um, I like the bit where he picks up his mom and is immediately like, "Oh yeah, I'm carrying her out here. Fuck you." He's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> or this kid. <laughs> Every time I think he's not going to do something, he does something. Um, it's very similar to how he wants to break the spirit of the other one, but the the unbroken spirit of her just lets him keep going forward. He keeps thinking, okay, a normal person would give up here, right? So this is going to be enough. But every single time he's like, oh, God, God damn, really? <laughs> These dudes are not <laughs> giving up. <clears throat> Which is good, and yeah, another fucking fantastic ass episode. Oh god, the Zark is really fucking good. Yeah, it's really good. 
It is, and we're still not done with it. Let's go on <laughs> to the next episode. Episode 145. The color for each person's bond comes in various colors. Okay. <clears throat> we start off with Gintoki talking to us about filler. <laughs> about how... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about how anime filler works. Yeah, about how anime filler works and basically says, like, okay, there's two different ways that you can do it. You can either have a diversion path or you can have filler so that you can kind of meet back in the middle of it of some kind. You can kind of hold back the anime a little bit and try and do it that way. Or you can do the thing where you just kind of release episodes and then it ends up being that... um your character, the, the line gets so crazy that the characters that you've created in your anime are so different from the ones in the manga that you just can't, you can't ever fix the line that you've gone off on. Yeah, it's like too far out of this, yeah. Yep. And this is uh, the classic bit that you always see. This is the one I've always seen yeah, float all around over Twitter. Twitter all the time. Oh yeah, whenever they talk about Phil or anything, this one gets brought up. But it's a good example of it, to be fair. And uh, at the end, he says, like, so what is your solution for this? And he goes, like, my solution? I've wasted four minutes. And then the episode starts. <laughs> uh, we start here. Everyone is fighting. Gintoki is striking the hell out of Hassan because he says, like, this is my only chance. I can't let up for a single moment because if I let up, he he wins. <laughs> this is the best chance that we've got. And he's just, like, whacking the shit out of him. Um, just a strike after strike after strike, and then finally he does like um, he does like a super big power strike that slams him into the wall, and all it does is just to kind of make him really angry. <laughs> and he goes to grab him. It switch back to Seda, who has reached the control room. Shinpachi and Kagura are trying to hold back the attackers as he's trying to pull back the lever, but it won't budge. And he kind of recalls Hinawa's words um, about how finding the right motivation. It switches back to Gintoki, who is able to, like, jump out of him trying to grab him. Um, and they continue kind of, like, their barrage on him, throwing a bunch of knives. And it's enough to kind of, like, push him back and make him think that they've won. But then it turns out, like, no. He throws the knives directly back at them, and he... Um, Gintoki gets Sukoya out of the way, and he takes them for him instead. And he takes three knives to the chest. Um, he gives him a whole speech about saying, like, whatever, everything you're doing here is so useless, I'm just going to destroy you. As they get ready to face him, Gintoki tells her to back off. Because um, uh, me, myself, it's going to be enough, trust me. Um, and he says, like, cause at this point he thinks that, like, the thing that he wants to do is to, like, extinguish the light that has showed up because he sees that a lot of the... Uh, the thing that surprised him the most was that the women that he held back, they still had a flame to them. They still had a light. And he says, like, the best way for me to deal with this is to de deal with the direct fire of it, and that's you. So he assumes that if he takes it, then he'll be able to kind of satiate him. But he goes, like, no, no, no. All of you are dying as soon as I'm done with you. It just so happens that I want you to be first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he goes like listen as long as I have specific people by my side I, I'll never give up and I'll keep fighting Seda it cut back to Seda and he does a <laughs> a uh, father son Kamehameha switch on the switch where it's like him and he shows all the people that he's that has raised him he shows him with Tama, Kagura, Shinpachi Atose, Catherine um Basically, everyone but Gintoki is in this. <laughs> yeah, this, is there. Yeah, his spirit is currently busy fighting. But with that, they're able to um, to he's able to push it back. And as he's saying this, Gintoki's talking about like no matter how many times you try and like blow out the candles, um, it'll burst back into flames every time you try and blow it out. And someone like you can never blow out the flames. And because and he's able to get it open, and the sun comes in, and as the sun comes in, that's enough to kind of distract him long enough for um, Gintoki to land like this super crazy uh, strike on him. Again, Gintoki doesn't really have like words to call out, but he has like a blue Kamehameha aura to it, so that lets you know that it's strong. <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> it's an anime finishing move. When it even goes to the point where, like, um, funny enough, just like the father son Kamehameha, where like, it, even when he after he hits him with the move, it shows him getting blasted outside of the door and it directly into the sun. <clears throat> and after he gets hit with this, he remembers um, Hinawa's words when they first met, and they kind of show that he actually knew her from when he was like a little kid. Um, and says like uh, she wants him to be able to see the sun because she thinks it's kind of sad that he's not able to see the sun um, he is then lying on top of the rooftop and he's like drying up in the sun it's like the end of the Spongebob movie um, <laughs> where they get super dry up in land he says we were just a couple of goofy goobers aren't we <laughs> <laughs> uh, Conway says that the uh, the reason that he's drying up is because he was just always thirsty for the sun and trying to get to it. Um, he then says to Kamoy that, like, hey, um, I know you because you're basically walking the same path to you. And I know you because you're basically just like me. And let me tell you, the path that you walk is an empty path. That's what you're going to find at the end of it. And you're going to find that you actually can't grasp into anything. Because, like, the, the way that you are specifically, all you know how to do is to fight. And any time you find, the second you find something that you actually want to hold for yourself, you're not able to hold it. Because you don't know how to hold. All you know how to do is to, like, like literally, like, tear into it. That's all you know how to do. You don't hold anything. You, um, you grasp it. You clutch it. That's what you do. And you'll clutch the life out of it. Because that's all you know how to do. Um... He starts remembering more of Hinawa's words from when she was a kid about how, like, um, she just wanted him to see the sun. Um, they see his... He starts to reach for the sun himself as he starts to have flashbacks of Hinawa as, like, a child. As uh, She, like, tried to, like, um, ask him questions. And then at one point she drew, like, a drawing of the sun and saying, like, the sun will wait for you. I know one day you'll see the sun. Um... And he says, damn, even when here at the end, even as I'm dying in the light, I'm going to have to walk in darkness and that's going to be the end of me. And he sees a light that starts to shine from him. And when he opens his eyes, he sees that Hinawa is right there by him as he um, is, is dying. And that's where the episode ends. And yeah, how do you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, it was good all the way up until I didn't really like the end where it was like, oh, I get you. You, you were just trying to do your own thing. It's like, no, no, don't empathize with this <laughs> fucking piece of shit guy. Uh, it, it, was, it, it felt it, weird it, for the girl who was like, yeah, you ripped my Achilles tendons out and wanted to ruin my existence, but I get it. Forced me into it's like, a no. life of prostitution, no. and it's like... No, you it, don't it, get it. No, I, I think, to be fair, she never outright says, like, hey, I forgive you, which I'm, I'm glad for. It's more of a thing of, like... It's a pity. It's more of just like a... Okay. It's it's really weird because I think the, the way that this specific character has been, she's not like ever said outright, like, I hate you, or she's done like things like that. It's more of a thing of like... It's like he said, like, no matter what he tries to do, he can't stop her from, from like being on his level. She can't. He can't stop her from being positive. He can't stop her from trying to find and save other people. And even at the end of his life... When you would think it would be the time for her to be like, good riddance, fuck you. She's still there for him at the end. And that's the thing that baffles him the most. Is like the idea of someone that is that kind. And who is literally someone who can be the sun in a place with no sun. And yeah, I get it. At the same time, I'm with you where it's like, eh, you know, <laughs> this guy's crimes are a little bit too massive for me, dog. I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I'm, it's definitely a feeling like, <laughs> you know... It's similar to the way when Rorschach gets killed, where I'm like, listen, it's still a pretty good death. <laughs> That's where I'm yeah, at here. It's, at the okay. End. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It, he, he seems to understand that he is an awful person living an awful life, and the only way to bring him down is this. There's, there, was, there was no, like, in his head where he's just like, oh, uh, you know what I really wanted? I just wanted a normal life, and that wasn't something that was afforded to me. He said, no, that's not who he is. What he is is a man who is built on blood, and he's built on vengeance, and he's built on this. He's a man who's so built into violence, he doesn't know how to hold anything. Everything he holds is literally just like 
um, eventually he chokes the life out of. There's nothing to him. So, I think it's interesting that for him to, his perfect match is someone who is literally the opposite of him. Someone who is like the eternal darkness, the eternal night, fighting the eternal light. And he is meeting his match and he just has to go like, god damn. Okay. <laughs> he goes, alright. Fuck. <laughs> I deserve this. Ah, like, oh, shit. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I'm going out. And that's the end of it. But at least I get to see the sun and I get to get out here and we're done here. It's definitely, it almost kind of feels like to me, like how you remember the, the, the line in wind waker that Ganon says when you fight him, like the, the one thing where he like, he does all this evil shit. And then he said like, the one thing I've coveted more than anything was the winds of Hyrule. Cause that was something I never had. Because I grew in the in the desert and I coveted those winds. It's a very similar to me where it's just like, ah, this is a guy who is 100% evil in everything that he's doing. But the thing that he's specifically fighting for is the idea and the understanding of the thing that is the opposite of him. That's what he wants most. So yeah, I agree with you that it is a little bit like, oh yeah, this guy. <laughs> Some of the crimes this man is a, don't don't ask me to <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, you you don't need to be. I'm not about to nice. pull a Tanjiro here and start weeping for this man, but I will go like, hey. <laughs> You can die now. <laughs> go, go, put the pillow over his head. It's like, go, go, go into the light. But yeah, no, I think for her, it, it makes a lot of sense for her to be this eternal way for it. If it was a, if it was ever a situation where she had shown any form of like malice or hate towards him, I definitely would be like, okay, th- this feels unearned. But the way that she's specifically acting, it's a, it's a definite thing of like, I don't feel like she should, but. That's why I'm not her, and she's a good person. <laughs> she's the eternal light, and I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I guess that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I she's... guess when she is like the the unstoppable light person, maybe it makes sense. That yeah, exactly. She's nicer about it than yeah. I would be. No, not me, dog. I'd be immediately dancing on this man's grave. I'd be like, hell yeah, high fives, everybody. He's gone. <laughs> Because that's how I felt when Kentucky fucking blasted him out the, out the window. And I said, yes, die in the sun. <laughs> die in the sun, motherfucker. Exactly. That's how I was feeling. But yeah, I, I definitely liked a lot of the, like I said, the father-son coming out <laughs> type moment. I'm a big sucker for a, if you show me a character and he's being supported by the spirits of his friends in the background, I'll show you a series that I love. I love that shit. I live for that that's shit. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's it's that kind of like base trophy hype. It is, and I'm a definite big fan of it. I wouldn't be as huge into Dragon Ball if I wasn't a huge fan of the coming together and having and the bonds of friendship stuff and doing all that good stuff. And having a light extinguish it. I was, I was also giving heavy Naruto. Because the second this is this heaven. And they start talking about like fire. And you can't blow out the... I immediately cut to a flashback of all like... The flames of Konoha will never be extinguished. <laughs> like all this... All this... <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah, I can see it. And, you know, it was the error of the time. <laughs> Your flame could not be extinguished. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I thought it was a good episode. Even notwithstanding the fact that I wanted to see that man die, I thought it still was really good. Uh, anything else you have to specifically say here? Uh, no, I don't think so. It was just, it was just really good. It was one of those, like it, the height payoff moments, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where it was just everything yeah, that I'll... you've been waiting to happen finally yeah. happened. I also really like seeing Gintoki bathed in light. In the background, he's just standing there, full of blood. Barely standing, real good. <laughs> real good hero pose moment. Let's go to the actual ending of this arc, everybody. Episode 146. We've made it. Uh, the taste of drinking under a broad daylight is something special. Oh. Um. We cut to the ending. He's dying. Hinawa has his moment, and he basically dies as he walks into the... He walks into death, which he would see was darkness, but it was light. But then we see Kamoi, who says, like, yo. He's basically us in this situation. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, pretty much. He's like, that was fucking sick. <laughs> Let's go. Fuck him. Am I right? Um, 
Uh, he says, like, hey, just because that guy's gone, that doesn't mean that your situation here is gone. Like, the, the darkness is still everywhere. And Kentoki says, like, yeah, whatever. We still got the light, bitch. Do I need to go through this again? <laughs> we are the light. <laughs> I need to do this a second time. Um, they get interrupted by Kagura, who is immediately, like, <laughs> she's immediately, like, uh wanting to start smoke with her brother she's like no <laughs> i'm gonna you're you're nobody else's business but mine and she tries to go fight him um kamoi says like this is annoying uh he tells her to look after her um she's weak but i think she could eventually become stronger and that would make her that would be good because that means i could eventually kill her when she's stronger and then he tells him you should also get stronger uh heal your wounds because now i'm really interested in killing you <laughs> I'm going to kill you when the time comes. Uh, and he finally leaves, um, even though Kagura is still trying to go after him and is like she is screaming at him to, and all that, all this other stuff. Um, we cut to Abuto. He has not died, even though it looked like he had died in the previous episode. Um, Kamoi is picking him up, and he says, like, you know, he says, I'm really annoyed because... Um, it's made you weak. You care too much about the bloodline. You're specifically so into the blood that you've. It's made you weak, and that's why you're. You got your ass kicked. Um. And it's got you injured. He's like, it just didn't feel right that when I was fighting, he's like, he said, like you were fight, you were holding back that entire time. He's like, I wasn't holding back. It's just that I felt like it was a waste to waste such good blood in that specific moment when she can grow and learn more. He's like, eh, I think I get it, because I'm really interested in the samurai dude as well. Um, I'm interested in the samurai, because it's like, this guy, I know you didn't see it, but this guy who beat him, he shouldn't have been able, he's like, I'm really interested in dudes with a strong spirit and a strong body, and this guy had neither, <laughs> and he was able to win. <laughs> um, so I'm really interested to kind of see where this goes, and I kind of want to see... Um, uh, someone that could eventually... I want to see more of this dude who can rival Ayato, basically. And I see him now as my prey. Um, and he looks like he's going to kill Abuto, but he decides not to, because he's like, I need you alive. And um, Because this guy, if it gets out that he killed him, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So I'm going to need you to... I'm not very good at diplomat diplomatic stuff, so I'm going to need you to basically make it so um, he's safe and no one comes after him. Because I want him, basically. And he's like, oh, this is annoying. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, do I have to do this? And he's like, oh, <laughs> he's like yeah. And then yes, it cuts... You do. It, yeah, and it cuts back to their conversation earlier. He's like, well, you know, I wanted to be the space pirate king. He's like, that's not what the, <laughs> that's not what I was talking about back then. He's like, oh, no, it's great. You're going to help me become the pirate king, right? Because um, when they were talking about ambition so many episodes ago, he's like, do you want to be like the pirate king or something? He goes, like, yeah, <laughs> I want to be the king of the pirates. Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, fine. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be the pirate king. Sounds good. Sounds good. And I can't tell if it's because they're actually pirates or if they're just making One Piece jokes, but either way, I think it works. Um, we cut to Mabozo, who's at the graveyard of uh, Hassan, and he says, they start talking about it, and they said, like, it's really weird. You humans are weird. You guys hated him, and you've made a grave for him. I don't understand you guys. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, but okay. He's like, so why'd you guys leave him out here? He's like, oh, you know, so he could sunbathe, basically. <laughs> That's why we buried him out here where the sun was. Um, and through their conversation, he tells him, like, Kamoi is the new Night King. Um, and he's going to be, he left the Yoshiwaru, and that's the reason why they haven't come after you, is because he's basically taking credit for killing Hasoi. So that no one else can come after you. And it says, basically, you have to watch out. And then Umibozo tells him, like, here's the other problem. Kagura really thinks that she can save her brother. So what are you going to do when he comes after you? And he's going to come for your life. And she thinks that she can save him. He's like, mm, that's a good question. Yeah, um, I don't think he answers either, does it? No, he just walks away. Yeah, he just kind of walks away. He's like, I don't know. He doesn't even say, I don't know, he just kind of leaves, the, you know, that classic in Tokyo, he just, hmm, I have no, <laughs> I have nothing to say here. <laughs> I have no answer to this. Nope. Uh, and we cut back to Yoshiwaru, and we see that it's everything's perfectly fine. They're a little bit anxious because it looks like he's not attacking. It looks like Gintoki is not telling him the reason that they're not being attacked is because 
Kamoi is specifically waiting for the right moment to kill Gintoki himself. And funny enough, Gintoki does mention it by saying, as long as I'm alive, he's not going to be attacking this place, <laughs> which is true. His life is the... <laughs> Yeah, that is actually true. It is true. He is in his own way telling him basically, eh, don't worry about it. Um, we see that he's like, oh, so how come none of the prostitutes left? You think they'd leave even though the sun, you know, they can leave now. They're not here. He's like, they literally don't know any. A lot of these people were here from when they were children. They don't know a life other than this. So the best we can do is that they can continue living this life, but it's now under our terms and things can be better. He's like, oh, that, you know what? That's great. So what are you guys going to, he's like, we want them to live in a place where they can bring their sons and daughters and they can feel proud. It's like, oh, that's great. So what do you guys got here? He's like, we've taken we've taken out some of the other things that we put in a lot of the hand job stations and a bunch of, they mentioned all these like other sex shops that they've opened up. It's like, what kind of reputable place is this? It's like, all you've done is like move things to the site, but it's still a sex place. How are you going to bring a kid here? He's like, no, 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 listen. It wasn't okay previously because they were forced to do it. Now they choose to do it, Shinpachi. It's different. It's, it's 100% different. And he goes like, I don't see the, I don't really see the difference, to be honest. He's like, listen, it's all right. The chains have been broken. And then you see they cut to like an S and M woman outside, and then he's like, That man is literally chained. <laughs> he is a giant in broad daylight. What are you talking about? He's like, It's okay. I was like, Where's the kid? Oh, the, they have the kid working in a in a shop, in a toy shop. And he's like, oh, at least he's in a good, reputable place. And they cut to the kid and he's in a sex toy shop. Everything yeah. is censored <laughs> but him. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes out to meet him and he's got like two censored toy dicks in his hand <laughs> and he goes oh it's so good to see you and he trips and he puts a dick in some guy's ass <laughs> and yeah he trips and shoves a fucking like vibrator up some dude's ass cause it's making noise after he does it yep and then as he's getting chased he's like i want you <laughs> i want you to get back my first time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we have a happy ending as uh his his mom Hinawa comes out from her wheelchair, and they all have a good old happy time, and everything goes, um, everyone's happy, and they cut to a special version of the ED, which has all the stuff from this arc, and then at the very as end, as tradition, yeah, as his tradition, and then at the very end, there's two other bits, there is a Ginpachi sensei, where he answers some great questions, the first question is, um, when Kagura's brother was first shown, he had black hair. So what? what's up with that? His hair isn't black anymore. He's like, very good observation. And he puts the note in the rejected pile. <laughs> he puts the letter in the, the rejected pile and he picks up another fan down. He goes like, this one comes from Anal Destroyer 27. And it says, during the Yoshiwaro is burning arc, what part of Yoshiwaro was burning? And he tosses it into the rejected pile and it says, the end. <laughs> Yep, I don't, he doesn't answer any of them, does he? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a metaphorical burn. <laughs> it's not a real burn. And then finally, all the way at the end, Hinawa is serving him under the sun of uh, whiskey, and he kind of goes like, ah, this is the life. And it's a reference back to 143, where he said, like, I would love to be served by a beautiful woman out in a, like, a little dinky shack in the sun rather than to be served here. And he actually gets that drink. And that's the end of the um, Yoshiwaro was burning arc. How do you feel about this specific episode, Zen? This one's good. I thought the ending was funny. Uh, I like when they make it a little lighthearted like that, even though you probably shouldn't have children in dildo shops. Um, <laughs> we, both can, we both here at Shonen Archive agree with that. <laughs> we are both pro-sex <laughs> work, can, but we are not pro-kid in the, in the sex <laughs> Um, but it was funny and it was it was sweet when um, they kind of have that moment at the end where he's like you know it's not that different from our town really <laughs> in the grand scheme of things <laughs> like, there's laughter and joy yeah that's the thing yeah. that makes it a, a, toy, uh, a place yeah and it was it was nice it was, it was a very wholesome funny ending to help you come down from the intensity of what was going on just before that yeah because like like we said there was a lot of dark stuff especially when they cut they showed the achilles tennis i was like jesus christ man i don't know how much more of this shit i can take yeah that was super <laughs> fucked up yeah when it's like why isn't she leaving it's like oh that's why she can't leave like yeah fuck <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of like fuck okay <laughs> that's why 
it was but yeah i liked it at the end seeing her and seeing her still happy and being in the wheelchair and moving around you know a happy typical gintama and this is i think why a lot of those silly jokes need to kind of happen because the ending bit here where it was just like ah <laughs> yeah sex jokes in the ass hand job shop i love it especially because it is, it is um Sukiyoko, uh is talking about like oh yeah we put up the the hand job shop and everyone seems happy <laughs> Um, it it's nice just to have the characters kind of unwind after, especially going through so much shit in a specific arc, and yeah, it feels nice. It feels like a a good way to end it and be like, okay, we're building towards some other. So it's actually very similar to kind of Benny Zakura, where it's like we're building towards some other things. We now know that someone else is now coming after Gintoki at some point. Um, but besides that, we know like, hey, this place it's changing. It's still going to be a sex place, but at least all the women that are going to be there are going to be able to have kids, and they're going to be able to be... It's consenting as well. So it's like, okay. Good. good. They literally don't have in any other life, but at least they are in control of what they do, and the choice to be there is their yeah, own. Yeah, we went from bad sex work to good sex work. Exactly, and we hear it's shown in archive. I'm so totally <laughs> about to get slapped by YouTube, but I don't give a fuck. Art of supportive <laughs> of positive sex consensual work. Get it out there for everyone out there. Thumbs up. <laughs> Come at me, fucking YouTube. I got for go videos. What the fuck are you going to do? Take the 20 cents for this video? <laughs> go get your hand jobs, everybody. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I hope no one of my neighbors hear that. But anyway, let's talk about the overall arc itself. What a fucking fantastic arc. A much needed fantastic arc after the struggle of the last bit that we've been going yes. through uh it was much needed and man it went really hard <laughs> the whole arc was super good yeah it really was it was Ooh, i think i see why a lot of people were saying like oh yeah i can kind of see why some of the people when we get to benny zakura when we were just like going oh man this shit is great and they were just like this is considered the weakest and i was like really this is considered the weakest that's crazy how good are the other stuff and i'm like oh this shit is good <laughs> yeah <laughs> still so with all good. the 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 love and respect for benny zakura but i can definitely see where some of the people are just like going oh man just wait and I see a lot of people were really hyped for us to get to this specific arc. They're like, oh my god, you're well, I think I think Sukuyo is like a really big like fan favorite character. Yeah, as far I can, as I'm aware. I think that makes a lot of sense. I, when I showed a picture, like I said, when I showed my friend the girl, he's like, this new girl is cool. And he's like, which one? And I showed him and he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Just you wait. Yeah, I think that a lot of it helps with that. It's a character that... Um, and she is really good. She is really good throughout this entire arc. I like all the moments that she has in here. And like I said, she feels like she belongs like immediately once she's kind of in there. Um, I kind of like this continuation of again. There's not a lot of this in a lot of shonen art of uh, a lot of shonen arcs in general. Of um, having kind of like a woman focused first kind of go for it, and this one really is to me a really women focused in that way. Like, it's not just Gintoki just saving a bunch of women by himself. It's him teaming up with the women themselves in there going, like, no, we need to fight back. And he's not, like, going, like, no, stand back. The only time he says no, stand back, but it's, like, I'm going to die. <laughs> We're dead. <laughs> Let them kill me. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll be fine there. But when they're actually legitimately fighting, he's not, like, saying, like, there's no need for you to get involved. He's, like, no, no, no. <laughs> We're going to need all the help we need for this raid boss of a man. <laughs> So I really like that. I liked a lot of the bit with Kagura going forward. I'm really interested to see what they do with the Kamoi stuff. Um, and yeah, I also really liked Kamoi in this. I, like I said, in terms of a villain, it's a really good, like, I just don't know where this guy's kind of going. Um, every single bit he had with the kid, where even when he was making jokes, it was like, eh, that was funny. But it was also <laughs> kind of moment of just like, I don't know when to laugh with this guy. <laughs> Um, and yeah, just fucking great overall. I can't wait for more stuff like this. <laughs> if there's more in the future for us. Yeah, I, I hope so. Because, man, there was a couple weeks where I was like, dude, fuck, I gotta watch this garbage ass shit. We're just gonna be <laughs> doing nothing. Uh, I'm glad we're back in peak fiction territory. It was very needed. Yes, 100%, definitely. 
And this was, for me, 100% peak fiction. It was like, oh, for the entire time, just going for it. To the point where I was just like, um, because we had to record a little bit later. And we're even getting to the point where I should uh, probably be started with my work. Don't worry, I'll put it on my timesheet. Officially, I'm working now. (laughs) Hard at work. (laughs) But we had to hold it back because I was like, could you, could you record it tomorrow? And Zen's like, I'm not really going to be available till then. And I was already halfway through the episodes. And I was like, no, nah, we need to fucking talk about this. We need to get it done. Yeah, we, we need, need to done. get this done. And we'll hold off for a bit a little bit later into the night than what we're comfortable with. And goddamn, was it worth it, I'd say. 100% enjoyable the entire way through. Even with... Uh, not not even 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 with me waking up and having not the greatest start of the day, this was definitely a good like pick up and go like okay, <laughs> ready for <laughs> the rest of the night now. I can go through work. <laughs> I can be happy knowing I at least got to see some good shit before I went in. And yeah, <laughs> and at the end of the day, that's really all it is when it comes to watching shonen anime. <laughs> you live for yep. an arc like this. <laughs> you live for the hype moments. Yes, one hundred percent. So, as always, feel free to tell us what you have to say about this arc. I bet there's a decent number of Gintama people that can tell us about it. Like I said, there's so much that you can analyze yourself. We could do entire deep dives for specific episodes and be like, look at the specific themes of it. There's so much to, to talk about, which is fucking cool. <laughs> I love this uh, the so secting cool. themes. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate meathead manga person in me. <laughs> um... But feel free to leave whatever you want to say about the circus, man. I can see a lot of dudes having a lot of fun things to say about it. And let's talk about next week, because I think next week we'll have a more chill time with it as we go to, um, uh, yeah, let's just end the season and we'll go episode 147, 148, 149, and episode 150. We'll have a clean break at 150 episodes, and then I'll look at the upcoming episodes and kind of decide how we want to balance it for the next stuff but i bet because i haven't looked at it because this is the end of uh, season one that a lot of people consider season one but this wiki considers it season three and then funny enough the show itself considers it season three yeah i i don't even know how to track these seasons there's we'll, we'll just whatever go. whatever crunchyroll says I, Wh- whatever I joke in toki's making about the current season that's the season so we'll go with that so look forward to next episode as we talk about that. There will be a tiny mini arc, but it seems like, based off of this, it's going to be of just a parody arc. So good enough. And it's going to have the Shins and Gumi, so hopefully that's good enough. And yeah, that's going to be next week. So as always, as we're doing the ending bit here, if you want to check out some more Zen, you can go to Zen's channel. Check out Shonen and Shell, where he talks about uh, weekly Shonen Jump and the series that are going through it. Um, I heard Mashal's ending, and then I also saw that, uh, that guy has been wanting to end it, so that kind of made me go, like, what happened with Mashal? You can probably find out by going to Zen <laughs> and hearing all of what he has to say. <laughs> um, Stuff sure did happen. It, sh- <laughs> it sounded interesting. It, it's funny, when it's something is ending and it's a way that's like, oh yeah, this guy just wanted it to end, that's when I'm like, hmm. That's interesting. How did you, by the way, now that you're here, how did you feel about the, uh, the end of the flashback arc in the, your, uh, the, oh man, I can never remember it. It's Sakamoto days. When they uh, f- I thought it was good. I, it was funny snapping back to real life and you're being like, oh, right. These oh, yeah. are characters. These <laughs> characters. Yeah. Scary. And it was like, oh shit, yeah. I forgot that's what we were doing. <laughs> I was just so yeah. engrossed in this assassination world, and then you see old old Sagamoto with his round shape. I was like, "Oh, I remember this." Yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a jump coming from like, "Oh, assassin school final exam." Oh, right, the guy with the bird and the rifle yeah. is here. I forgot he existed. Yeah, it was definitely like, "Okay, it's time for me." It's not as bad as World Trigger, <laughs> where I'm like, "Going, who the fuck is this character?" Oh, I, I've stopped reading World Trigger. I'll catch up when there's like 80 chapters for me to go through all Yeah, once. Yeah, do that because trying <laughs> I, to keep... I'm not reading two chapters every six weeks with do, no uh, idea who the fuck I'm looking at. I, I have to constantly look back at the wiki and be like, who the fuck is this character? Also, with? World Trigger has so many characters that look the same. They, they, they're that's not the visually one. distinct at all. No, they don't. But then they also have... they they. But every single one of them has like a distinct way of personality in the fights themselves. 
So that's where they annoy. He's like, you have an entire built a character built around you that is completely different from this character that kind of looks similar to you. And that's very annoying to me. <laughs> uh huh. It's fucking impossible. Anyone that's not like the main three people, I'm like, no, I I don't know who you are. Yeah, bro. the, the <laughs> ones who I are no who you are. The ones who are specifically like differently, uh, they look different. Yeah, yeah, the ones that actually have like a unique visual style. Yeah, they have different heights. For like the 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 girl is like clearly different from any other woman in the cast. Uh-huh. You must clearly different from any of the other <laughs> women in the cast. It is really funny how they um, how it is like that, <laughs> but still. Um, yeah, and you can check out my channel for Ghost doing a bunch of anniversary stuff. I try and remember to, uh, maybe over the 4th of July I'll actually record some other non Fago things, but also Fago anniversary starting up pretty soon. So, <laughs> expect more Fago videos. They've actually been doing really well. That makes me happy. <laughs> so, I'll keep that. Doing. Anytime it's going good, that's good. Yeah. There, the there's a day. just came out in Star Rail today. It's a good day. Oh, yeah. I, unfortunately, I can't start Star Rail because I'm afraid of going into them. Got to Infinity and Marvel Snap. Didn't make a video on that, but let me tell you, Bounce is pretty fucking good. As a yeah, I was thinking about making a a Bounce deck. I'm playing like um, it's almost like a control deck, sort of, but it's mm. built around like Craven and Angela and like Silk. Interesting. Controls have basically a like you, mm-hmm. you put like Angela. You, Angela down, and then you keep cycling Kitty through her, so that she keeps, like, getting the two every turn, because Kitty keeps going into her zone, and then coming back. And then you play Silk into her zone, followed by Kitty, so that Silk can swing out into where Craven is to bump him up, while Kitty keeps pumping Angela. It's pretty fun, but it it has some matchups that are not so good. Yeah, that's something that's being the main, diff- especially with Conquest taking everyone by storm. If your deck has a bad matchup, and you get matched up with that deck, you just gotta go... Mm! <laughs> I guess like, I just well, lose. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about switching back to ramp because I feel like ramp is good. Ramp is really good if you're playing um, because uh, thankfully Sandman's out of the meta because uh, he's not a five five anymore, so I don't have to worry about him as much. But he's definitely like I can deal with a single wave and I can deal with Killmonger. I can't deal with Sandman. That's yeah, the one. See, that's card. why I love it. Cause, like you get Sandman out on turn four, and a bunch of decks are like, well, yeah, this I'm, is literally I have to I'm have done. like. I can't I, do that, anything. Yeah, especially because the way they changed Kitty, old Kitty could have handled it because old Kitty you can choose to return to the hand at any time, but new Kitty you can't. So yeah, you're just stuck with Kitty on the last turn. Exactly, but I have to get like super lucky and have like um, a Mysterio that's been hit by Bast and also Bishop already built up for me to stand a chance. And Angela, and by that point, it's like I was gonna win regardless of any deck, but uh, <laughs> I don't have this set up every single game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, and you can check out a bunch of all the... We'll figure out some other stuff, and I also need to get back into Street Fighter VI. I'm thinking of playing that AEW game as well, because I'm a big fan of WWF No Mercy. I heard it's very uh, buggy, but what is what wrestling game is not Yeah, I was about to say, what good is a wrestling game if it's not absolute horseshit? Fair. Even though... <laughs> even when the best wrestling game of all time, sorry uh, fans of Fire Pro Wrestling, is an N64 game... It kind of shows you, and this one is going, it's kind of like that N64 game, except for it's got modern day jank in it. I'm like, that still sounds pretty good. I saw a guy go on a skateboard and run into the ring on a skateboard and then uh, jump out of the skateboard and hit a guy on a table, and that's good enough for me. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds awesome. None of the WWE games have that level of stupid in it. (laughs) I love that, so I'll try that out. But we'll be back. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching, especially if you heard almost the entire two hours. It's going to be two hours once I put in the music and everything. I just realized. Two hours giga <laughs> Shonen Jump Archive. Thank you guys very much for watching. It was not for you guys, we would not be continuing it. For Go fans may be the ones keeping this channel running, but I always remember the ones on Shonen Archive. <laughs> and we appreciate every single one of you that leaves a comment, likes, or just watches in general. It's uh, very heartening for us. It is. It's always nice to know that people are excited to see it. Exactly. And I talk to us about it as well when we do it on Twitter. It's one of the very few positives on Twitter nowadays is when I start Gintama and the Gintama fans go like, Yo! <laughs> yes! You guys are recording this week! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you guys in the next Shonen Archive. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace! Peace!